So what does shamanism have to do with peace? Oh, I'm Marbeth Dunn, and welcome to the World Miracle Peace Experiments Conversation About Peace. My special guest today is Carrie Hummingbird, and she is a soul guide. She is a social activist, a leader, a philanthropist for more than 30 years, and she is also the founder of the Skills Not Pills movement and the host of the Soul Nectar Show. Carrie, I am so thrilled to have you on the show today. Wow, welcome. Uh, thanks so much for, for inviting me to be part of this, this movement that you've created. It's so beautiful what's flowing through you, and I, I think it's so needed at this time. So thanks for having me on board. Wow, I, I'm so thrilled to have you. So you are a shaman, among other things. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself that, but people have said that about me. <laughs> I would say that. I think out of all of the the um, techniques that you use, what comes forth the strongest is shamanism. So I would love to ask you, how does that play into peace? Well, you know, it's really interesting. All humans have one thing in common, the earth. And we're all born of the earth. We're all including the elements of the earth. We all are comprised of water, fire, earth, and air. And shamanism is really that uh, recognition that we are living on planet earth and that the earth is a consciousness. It's not just some like thing that we live on and we're the only things that are conscious. That would be extremely presumptuous to think that we're the only conscious things on this planet the planet herself is conscious water is conscious of course trees are conscious mountains are conscious right yeah absolutely everything and so shamanism is you know i think what's happened is that um people have gotten in their minds about god spirit source connection they've really gotten in their heads about it yes and and that's creating a lot of divisiveness because well, people yes. are like, well, mine is right and yours is wrong. Well, yes, because <laughs> what we're, a lot of people are doing is they're anthro anthropomorphizing. That's such a word there. God. That is a big word. <laughs> it is, but that's exactly what they're doing, yes. anthropomorphizing, right? They're creating, uh, they're creating God in their own image. They're yes. creating religion in their own image. And then they're making up these rules. The you know, rules, exactly. Like yeah, and if you do it this way, you're a good, good person. And if you don't, well, then you're bad, you're evil, you're whatever. Yeah. And we can't all look like each other because we don't. <laughs> you know? We don't but look I mean, like – I mean, yeah. we're different, right? We're different. And what happens, I think, also is that when people – don't buy into your belief system. They have a different belief system, but they, and when they don't buy into yours, so many people perceive that as an attack on what they believe because you need to believe the way they do. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, so we're not going to agree on ideology. Yeah. So what can we agree on? That is really the common denominator. What can we agree on? So we can agree that we live on the earth because that's really indisputable. We live on the earth all together. Absolutely, 100%. We cannot deny that we live on the Absolutely. earth together, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And we can start to experience um, connection through the earth. So that's exactly what shamanism is. Mm -hmm. It is re the recognition that everything around you is conscious. The trees, the rocks, the animals, the birds, the mountains, the earth, everything is. I think that I'm, I'm shamanic in that way too. It's conscious. If you, yeah. if you, uh, you've, you've probably had a moment in your life sometime where you, re you thought for a second, wait a second, did I feel that tree want me to hug it? Like, did I, is that stupid? I mean, did I really feel that? Or, or, you know, was that bird flying here right for me? It just flew right up and looked like right at me. 
is it looking at me? We've all had those moments where yeah. we had this eerie feeling like, this is for me in this moment. This thing's communicating with me somehow. Yes. Right? And so shamanism is, the, is that pathway of um, exploring that experience of what I like to call the great spirit, which I like to believe is, a, is an indigenous belief that uh, it's very simple, you know, that that spirit, that great spirit in Christian mentality, maybe it'd be the Holy Spirit flows through everything that is, including me, including you, including the rocks and the trees. And so that for me creates connection. And I think through connection, we can come to peace because we can realize we are the same at some level. We are, we are the same. We have something in common. I love that. Yes. We all have that connection and you could, you know, you could say, you know, that it's source, God, the universe, that, that element or that chi, that life force energy is in everything. And that is the common denominator. So, you know, yeah. and this is another really cool thing. I, I can't remember where I heard it, but I think it's like an indigenous uh, story or, or parable, you know, or whatever you want to call it. But that um, every time you take a drink of water, you're drinking the same water that all of your ancestors on this planet have drank. Like every ancestor that ever lived on this planet has in some way embodied or drank that same water because mm, yeah. all the water, if you notice like water, like it doesn't, <laughs> if you had a big bucket of water and you took one cup, of, cup over here and another cup over here and you poured them both in the bowl, this, this water wouldn't stay, <laughs> you know, like, this is the water that was in that glass, you know, <laughs> and this is the water that was in that glass. Like it doesn't right. stay divided. It, it merges together. It, it, when it all, it all goes back into the same water. Absolutely. Well, I think when we recognize that we're not the physical bodies, but that we're so much greater that our essence is really love. And I know we're speaking on a higher level right now, but we recognize that our essence is love, which is the same essence as our creator or um, spirit or <clears throat> whatever you want to call it, that connection that flows in all of us, that higher power, and that we can connect as these, this, in this higher realm of being spirit, then we are like the water we are all one and you can't divide really any part of us because as one, we are united and we have this infinite power, which is really the basis of the world miracle peace experiment that as that one big bucket of water, we are infinitely powerful and we can affect change. Yeah. And we, you know, what's interesting is for me, I think it was, some mystical experiences I had that helped me to become aware of the connection of all beings. And I'll share one of them. That's fun. This, cause this is like a shamanism <laughs> discussion, right? So I was on a retreat in the woods, no food for three days. Ooh, yeah. No left brain activity, you know, just by myself in the woods with some water, had water. And the first day my mind was still super busy, you know, just making stuff up and creating a medicine wheel and, you know, like just kind of praying and whatever else I, just to entertain myself. And I got to the end of the day and I thought, okay, what am I going to do? And I decided I'm going to, I'm going to sing an Icaro. I'm going to practice an Icaro, which is a healing song from the jungle. And so I was going to practice this Icaro. And all it does is you just call in support. You say, hey, please come help me. Please come help me. Please come help me to the birds, to the mountains, to the plants, to the whatever, you know, come be with me. I need some guidance or come, just come help me. And so I, just, I found a rock because I'm a sage. I found a rock to stand up on the rock and sing to the forest, you know, <laughs> like my audience. <laughs> you have a beautiful voice. Listen, I'm going to sing a little for you. So I stood up on the rock. And the only thing you need to know in this moment is that Siwa Kente means hummingbird in uh, Quechua, which is the language of the Carol shamans in Peru who I've studied with. So I stood up on the rock and I started singing this song. And, and uh, you know, 
I, I got this funny little giggle. I, I, I was singing, I was inviting in, you know, the trees and the birds and everything. And then I got this funny little giggle inside that said, you know, let's invite hummingbird. Just this little giggle. And so I said, okay. See what can taste you not ice, you not I on tea. See what can taste you not ice, you not I on tea. See what can taste you not ice, you not I on tea. See what can taste you not ice, you not I on tea. And out of nowhere, a hummingbird and hovered in front of my third eye for what felt like an eternity. It was probably 30 seconds. And I like this deep recognition, like you're listening to me. Yes. You're showing me that you're listening to me, that you're always listening to me. And the moment I got it and I said, you're listening to me, I see that. It went, nodded and went, <laughs> I was like, <sighs> and of course I couldn't share that with anybody at first because I was on, I was for three days on this land by myself and I had to be with that gift. I got to be with that gift just for me, knowing that I'm constantly being listened to. Yeah, you're being heard. And I find <laughs> that, that, that all of our unseen help, helpers, you know, angels, fairies, you know, <laughs> spirits, they're all real. They're all there and they respond to us when we ask them. But yeah. because we have free will, you know, they don't intrude. They're so respectful. So respectful. So I... You know, I just found like this morning, uh, I was telling uh, Carrie just before we started this conversation, how my morning could have been very stressful. And another time it would have been because I would have been all stressed out. I've got, got to do this and I have to fit all of this into this time. And today I just said, angels, could you please just handle everything for me? And people rearrange schedules, uh, time just worked out absolutely perfectly and I got back just in time to do the meditation with ease. So, you know, it, there's a hard way. And then when we ask our helpers, woo, magic happens. There's an easy way. And, you know, I'm really glad we're talking about this today because before I realized that I was constantly being listened to and that I was loved completely, I was very sad. I was judging myself. Mm. I was shamed about myself. I was guilty. I, I just felt like I'd made so many mistakes and I beat myself up over it day after day after day after day. And even though mentally I'd been studying how to be different, like I'd been going to psychotherapy for decades, which- What kind of therapy? Psychotherapy. Oh, okay, yeah. And trying to understand how would I, how I could fix me, you know? How you could don't I need to be fixed. Fix you know. me, you know? And it wasn't until I found this path and I had my first healing that I had this another mystical experience where this loving presence came over me. And for the first time, I felt a loving presence come in over me. And I, I started this journey of, of almost opening this door into this magical realm where all this support and love is there, which doesn't remove the challenges of my life, but it makes them um, so much easier to circumnavigate, you know, to kind of, because I realize, oh, okay, I'm loved and supported totally as I'm in this difficult moment. And if I can open to I've got all the support I need and this is a tough lesson for me as a person, as a soul right now in this moment and, ooh, it's tough, but I can open that up to get a little help, a little nurturing. It's like when you open, the answers come in and usually it's not as tough as you think it is. Usually it's like, oh, I just have to shift my thinking around this thing. Yes. And then it becomes a blessing. Yes, it's always a blessing. Everything is a blessing. I mean, it could seem like it's really a 
catastrophic situation, but it's really a blessing, you know, and also when we recognize that our, our, we're eternal beings, you know, we're not these bodies that die. We are eternal beings. So we may drop this form and move into a greater form, which is who we've been all along. So as we recognize this, you know, death is not anything tragic. Everything is an opportunity to grow. It's a beautiful thing. And it's also an opportunity to realize that you're not going to figure it out all in one lifetime. (laughs) This is a complex experience, okay? Like this takes skills to learn self-mastery skills, to learn how to be here and navigate this reality and, you know, learn all the, the lessons you came here to learn, but then also learn what are you learning how to do? You're learning how to wield and create a reality that you'd like to have. That's ultimately what we're here to learn, I believe. So you're going to come back in many forms. And and maybe um, if you have a really hard time understanding a perspective, in your next life, you might come back as that perspective. Sure. So that you can fully live it, immerse it, and be it, right? Well, let's talk a little bit about (laughs) your skills, not pills movement, which I think is really wonderful because you were stuck on pills. I was, I was on pills for 13 years and I had diagnoses and labels that I, you know, that I took on and adorned myself with and walked around ashamed of. And, uh, and the journey really began of healing began when I, number one, chose to be my own health CEO. I said, okay, The way they told me to do it, the way they told me they, the authorities told me I was going to get better was these ways that I've been doing for 20 years. I've given it the old college try. doesn't work for me. (laughs) Like first step was to say, this isn't working for me. And that's a big step for a lot of people. Sure. It's a huge step to, to step outside of the norm and to say, I think it doesn't work. You know, like that's huge, right? Did you find, did you find peace through pills? No, I didn't. I found mm. suppression of everything I was feeling. Yeah. You know, because after uh, 13 years of taking those pills, when I started to detox from the pills, I, I mean, it really is a detox process. And I started to come back into myself, like, who is, who am I? There was all of this repressed rage, you know, anger, grief that was, that had been brewing inside of me that I was unaware of because I was like disconnected from it through these pills. Sure. I mean, they literally put me in a glass wall. So I had a false sense of peace. I had, I wouldn't say it was peace. I would say it was disconnect, disconnection. Yeah. So like, um, disconnected from my feelings like a robot and uh unfeeling uncaring which then led me to be able to do things that were very hurtful to people that i was in relationship with because i couldn't feel the effects of it right so that i could get myself in deeper you know into the suffering sure but then not feel it and just brush it off and be like oh well that's their problem that's not healing. That's not really healing. And so when, when I peeled off that layer and I just, I said, okay, I'm detoxing from this. I had to face a lot of the uncomfortable truths that I had been ignoring and distracting from. Sure. That part is hard, right? But the thing is when you ask for help, it gets easier. Yes. (laughs) That's what happened. I asked for help. I got a healing. Amazing. I know. And <laughs> we're so loved and we're so supported mm-hmm. when we recognize it. You know, it's such a loving universe that we live in. There's so much love and support for us. And everything that we think happens to us is actually happening for us. How amazing is that? And when you can shift into that perspective or that understanding, then um, you can stop being ashamed of your mistakes and you can start a sh- I was just meditating about this this morning you can step into a space where you reclaim that innocent inner child 
that innocence that you had when you first came in, like so curious about the world, like so like in awe and wonder about everything happening and, ooh, this is happening. Why is this happening? And you can also hold that with wisdom. Yes. So that's the trick is to hold the innocence and the wisdom at the same time. Well, the innocence, yes, is it's a, it's a lack of judgment. It's just an opening to look at everything with brand new eyes without having a fixed judgment of, oh, that's what that is and that's the way it has to be. Once we step back and just say, okay, I'm open to seeing this from an entirely new perspective, then spirit can begin to work with us. And, and show us a whole different way of seeing, of perceiving what everything is. You know, looking at it through, through loving eyes, loving lenses. And sometimes love is, uh, nudges you in the yeah. right, in a better direction. I don't say right, because there is no, just, I don't believe in right. But in a better direction or a more potential filled direction. Mm, yeah, that's a better better way of uh, expressing it. Because really, when we remove those limits from those self created limits from our um, the way that we perceive everything and judge everything and think that you know, well, that's that's what that cup is for. When we take <laughs> that thought about, well, you know, it could have another um, purpose. And I'm going to open that up to pure potentiality. That's when things really get juicy. Yeah. And when you can realize that you're, when you can learn how to interface directly with the consciousness. Yes. That's super fun. And actually that's been my journey in the last, you know, eight years is once I had that healing, I said, I want to do that. I want to learn how to interface directly with this consciousness and I want to learn how it works. <laughs> like that's, that <laughs> yes. was my thing, right? I want to know it. Sure. And now I do to whatever yeah. capacity I can in this human understanding. But I, what I want to say is um, back to what you were saying about self imposed limitations is the way that we can come into inner peace around that. And, and back to innocence is to realize that our minds, part of the setup of planet earth is that our minds are domesticated and conditioned the moment we arrive into the patterns of our mother and father so, and whatever family ancestral belief systems or cultural belief systems that they live with. And so that might not, oftentimes that is a product of history and a product of suffering. And so that's not necessarily a product of truth. So, um, you say most often it's not, it's not, you know, we're on earth. It's mucky and muddy. Okay. <laughs> like it's also beautiful. <laughs> Definitely. It's mucky and muddy. So when you come in, you just have to realize at some point when you start to awaken that, Oh, wow. My mind believes a lot of things based on what my mommy, my daddy told me based on what my society told me that might not be true. And if I can open my perspective to see things through new eyes, I might be able to understand people better and build a heart bridge to people who currently I'm supposed to not like. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really important for us to take that journey if we want to have peace in the world or if we want to have inner peace even. Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, we have to understand uh, that everybody sees there's 8 billion perspectives on the planet as one for every person, and each one of them is correct. <laughs> that and is it, a lot that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Yes. Absolutely true. It's perfect. You know, we all have different perspectives. But let's have respect for each other, and let's recognize that it's okay. We're just facets different facets of the same diamond. And there's no mistakes. I mean, the creator, the great spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, is creating a reality just for you. And it's not going to match anybody else's reality because your soul journey is your puzzle to solve. <sighs> it's your soul journey. Don't you just love that? <laughs> and you're supposed to enjoy it. This is a gift. So... Yes, enjoy your soul journey. You know, how beautiful to be stepping in 
to our paths as conscious co-creators of, you know, of recognizing, okay, I don't have to do all this myself. And actually things work out so much better. There's so much less struggle, so much less pain when I actually step back and let spirit guide me because spirit can see everything from a much higher perspective. So why am I struggling with my little caterpillar view here? <laughs> <laughs> When I can be a butterfly and let spirit guide me. <laughs> I love that, of course, because I love butterflies. Of course, me <laughs> too. <laughs> wow, this is really, this is so much fun, Carrie. I'm so enjoying this. Uh, I know you're going to be leading the meditation on Tuesday, the 18th, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you going to sing? Or what are you Who going knows? to I- <laughs> You know, I'm going to meditate on that, for, but it's interesting because uh, I am a clear channel, so I usually open up and let it be guided. So I, it's always a mystery for me as much as it is for other people. It's going to come out of my mouth. I, I <laughs> so. think that. I'm the same way. I never know where things are going. So I have no <laughs> open idea. up and enjoy I it. And whatever is needed at the time, I'm sure, is what we'll download through. So, yeah, I'm excited to see as well what happens. I have no idea. So oh, I just feel so blessed to have you and all these other amazing guest hosts as part of this experiment. Wow. It's just so amazing. It's a beautiful gift that you're bringing out there for the world to enjoy and to contemplate and not in a way of like trying to fix other people, you know, but just in a way of, of opening up the consciousness, you know, of just expanding what's possible for us on planet earth at this time. And I love, you know, it's only the meditations are just seven minutes a day. I mean, they go a little bit longer because I'm fine, fine that I'm guided to speak a little bit, you know, beforehand. And, uh, it, it, you know, I've been getting the feedback, which has been so cool, of the, the way the participants, our peacecasters, have been shifting and changing as a result of these seven minutes a day. Um, they're feeling more joyous, more peaceful, less stress. Um, things are going better at work. And, and one of our peacecasters said uh, on video that uh, she no longer flips people off in traffic. So it's a good thing. That's beautiful. You know, I know. It's, it's wonderful. It's a prime example of, of how when we, uh, when we try to help others, actually, we end up helping ourselves. And happy humans make a happy planet. So <laughs> Happy humans make a happy planet. So let's be happy and joyful. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, the muck of the stuff is also necessary so that we can grow the lotus blossom, right? Absolutely. It's our soil. It's our soil. We pull the weeds and we plant the seeds and we create a magnificent garden. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Carrie, for joining us. I love you. This is just so perfect. I love you too. It's so good to be part of your project. I love this. It's a great project. And be sure to tune in to her, uh, her meditation on Tuesday. And thank you so much for joining us.